Fran Boet joins us, Director of Campaign Group Positive Money. Good afternoon to you, Fran. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on. Just a word on some of the uh, sort of practical nuts and bolts that feel closer to our lives than some of these big overarching political comments and statements at moments like this. The Chancellor talked about 60,000 young people being helped onto the housing ladder because of the scrapping of the stamp duty on, on certain properties. Well, I think that the Chancellor's quite cheery mood in today's spring statement does come across as dangerous and complacent when you look at what's really going on in our economy. Um, There have been a few small announcements, but basically this speech is about the state of our economy, so it is that kind of high-level stuff. Uh, And whilst the government is celebrating micro-improvements in GDP productivity and this budget surplus, the cost of that has been uh, eight years of austerity um, with where we've ended up with decimated public, serv- public services through austerity cuts and privatizations and households ac- across the country are in the red uh, and from you know where we're um, positioned positive money you know the bigger far bigger problem and far bigger drag on our economy is private debt which stands at 170 percent of GDP uh, and not the public debt which the Chancellor is fixated on. Um, and by private debt you just mean our own household debt? So that is I mean 170 percent includes credit card mortgages personal loans but also um, business and including financial uh, sector debt. And the question I'm asking our listeners this afternoon about whose financial offer they are inclined to accept, really, as voters, they really are strikingly different at the moment, aren't they? What, what the, main, the two main parties are saying about what they would do with the nation's economy, strikingly different. Absolutely. I mean, we're seeing, you know, there was an opportunity here for the, for the Chancellor to make a statement about wanting to reset things, about wanting a di- different direction. Um, but there hasn't been, you know, there's, there's been a few uh, small giveaways. I mean, you, the NHS funding is an example. That's, a, that's an example of how they, they can see we've had their worst winter in years for the NHS. People have been treated in corridors, but actually it doesn't go far enough. They're kind of papering over the cracks in public services that have come from, a, from eight years of austerity, uh, whereas John McDonnell is outlining a clear shift, a clear understanding of that um, crisis point for, for many households who are struggling, but also some of our public services, including the NHS, and a need to do a bit of a U-turn. What is it? Well, d- Labour describing it, and uh, giving voice to people and tapping into the emotional aspect of all of that because it, it inevitably the, the, the political and the emotional crosses over in this country when you talk about public services, especially the NHS, but not exclusively. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. Coming up with a solution that gets votes is another, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I think that as a director of an economic think tank, uh, you know, the country has been fed up a problematic narrative around our economy over the last eight years. And um, this continual fixation on the on the public debt by the Chancellor is uh, is kind of continuing that. OK, we might have stopped the conversation about the deficit when pretty much all ec- economists say you shouldn't be focusing on the deficit. But now we're moving that on to the national debt, which, again, most economists would say you shouldn't be focusing on. I mean, the chief economist of the Bank of England, Andy Haldane, talks regularly about private debt is our biggest threat to financial stability. Um, and some of the projections that Philip Hammond's uh, are doing are basically saying you know we haven't ended um, boom and bust that will stay, still play a factor in our in our national debt levels. But the point is, is as the chancellor of the country, you should be looking at financial stability, and that's private debt. So I think you know the issue is is that it. it, it is that they're putting across a story that isn't cor- correct in terms of how we grow our economy, how we um, create jobs and employment that is sustainable, how we invest in the country in terms of housing, infrastructure and things people need. And does Labour's renationalisation plan, national education service plan, refunded NHS plan, does that all add up? I mean, you know, I, I'm not here to comment on exactly the ins and outs of their budget, but the point is, is that there's an understanding of where the economy is at, and there's an understanding that we can't essentially continue to run our economy into the ground with more austerity and a kind of um, a few giveaways here and there, and essentially economy that's run on, um, you know, high levels of private debt, including ha- household debt and property. Debt and real wage growth like expected that. soon, he said, Absolutely. and expected to continue. Yeah, and again, that's welcome, but we have to remember it's on the back of the 
the worst 10 years in terms of wage decline and stagnation we've seen for over 100 years. So I think that the point is, is to actually tackle with the structural issues in our economy. We do need a bigger conversation. And, you know, today was was a bit of a disappointment and especially, you know, the cheery tone, the light of the end of the tunnel when there won't be. There will continue to be benefit freezes, which will mean a, a loss of around £300 for couples and children. And there's going to be a loss for many households. So it's not light at the end of the tunnel for many people. Are the Conservatives um, mistaken to, conti- to to follow that old adage, it's the economy stupid, when in fact we've entered a new era of politics where the emotion of one's own life matters a lot more? I think basically we've we've had eight years of austerity where people's lives are getting a lot worse and now we're seeing our NH, you know, public services breaking, you know, as I said people being treated in corridors. We're one of the richest countries in the world. Why is that happening? It's happening as a result of economic policy that the Conservatives have been doing for the last eight years. And I think there is actually disagreement within the Conservative Party about economic policy because they fundamentally are waking up to the the situation that this country is looking pretty bad in a lot of ways and especially with the added uncertainty of Brexit in our economy. You know, I don't think that there's a... um, there's a lot of harmony you know i think there's an understanding from the conservative party that it's not, it's not looking great for a lot of people in this country okay fran Boet, thank you director of the campaign group positive money will